Hello, welcome to the Arts Council website. So I'm going to do a video now on how to get Arts Council funding and how to fill in this form. So I do not work for the Arts Council, I should say. I am an artist who has got Arts Council funding now for almost 10 years. Um, I run a CIC and I'm an individual artist, so um, I'm well familiar with the Arts Council's application process. So I'm going to show you a successful application that I've done. I'm also going to show you an application where I got rejected and what that looks like and what you should do in all those situations. So Arts Council is an amazing resource and it has absolutely transformed my career. Um, so I think that this is a really valuable video and I think that you're going to get a lot out of it. Also hit the subscribe button please um, if you like this video and you want to see more of this kind of content. Also you can jump over to my website and do the course that I've got on setting up a CIC and getting funded within four months. I'm sure you'll find that really useful. It's only a cheap course and you get so much value out of it. And I also give the application form for this application, which I'm going to show you today, on paper form. So you can actually see exactly what I've written. I also give you a lottery form as well. So there's loads of content in that that's really, really valuable. So um, I'll put the links in the comments um, of my website um, so you can jump over there. Thanks. So here we are on the Arts Council application site. So um, we are going to go into a Get Funding, which you can see up here in the corner. I'm going to go to the Application Portal. So you'll need to set up your profile on Grantium. So this takes five days. So you can go ahead and set that up while you're thinking about your application form. So you set up your Grantium. And then for me, so I'm just going to log in. So here we are in my portal. So this is, I'm going to show you now um, a successful application form that I've done. Uh, this one actually went through first time, but it's quite often that you get rejected. So I don't think you're going to go through first time as I've already talked about in other videos. So here we go. So I'm going to look at my ceramic street art project. So that's currently running. Um, as you can see here at the top, got the application then I've got my offer letter there where I was accepted so I'm going to go in and have a look at the application. Now you'll see here on the left hand side that it is a massive application there's lots and lots of sections and this overwhelms a lot of people and it's what puts a lot of people off. Now don't be put off though it's just small boxes um, with a word count in uh, throughout the form and if you just tackle it bit by bit um, over a few days you will get um, through it so uh, let's go in and have a look. So we've got some basic details. So the first question you'll ask is, um, what's your selected priority? So you're going to put not applying against any timeline limited priority. Here I applied for 15,000. Um, we just ask you about religious reasons because some people can't apply. Um, and here it's asked um, where you get your price, where you get your pay for artists from like what how have you come up with those figures so here you're going to write artist union or you can write the actual website of the artist union um, and so you can say that you use them as your pay guidance and I've got about that in other videos if you have a look so this is probably one of your most important pages so here you've got to write in 50 words so a very short brief outline of what your project's going to be you want to make this sound really exciting. You'll notice here I've used exclamation mark. I've gone for very exciting language, like how uh, basically with street art, you think you don't think about ceramics and how I want to change that. I've got a bold idea. Um, so you, you, you want to be really bold. You want to be challenging. You want to be different. And then you want to put just your aim. So I want to form a collective of women artists um, and, and do a empowering exhibition in the streets. Um, in this section here, you want to do more detail then about your project. So here I've written my outcomes. You can see here um, to make 10 tiles for a street art. Um, I've put how I've got wall permission. I want to do a live stream exhibition. That'll be just streaming on social media. A digital exhibition, so something on a website or Instagram, TikTok. Um, and then I want to run four training workshops with adults. So I'll be training ceramics and I want to do a youth one as well. So you've got five workshops there, an exhibition in the community and some online stuff, basically. Um, and then as we go on, you can see you just tick which ones here are going to apply and save that. Um, and it's not specific, even though it's targeting women. Um, so that is sort of an audience. So I have put that, but obviously anybody will be looking at it. 
Now you put here some figures of who's going to be actually interacting with your project, who's going to be experiencing it. So here's my how many artists I'm going to have working on the project. That's my participants that are in the workshop. Um, and then you've got a few volunteers and you've got your online audience and your streaming audience. Um, and then your digital audience overall. So as you can see, I put massive numbers here. You definitely want to pick, put big numbers and make sure you build up your online um, your online reach because to be honest that I think that's one of the reasons why this went through first time is because I've got a really big audience um, so you put how you've come up with your figures but you've basically made up your figures because you don't know do you so um, but you just want to justify that in some way um, and then here you're going to put so I'm going to do a live event which will be like in the streets when I'm doing the exhibition and then there's a streaming broadcasting event put those in then it asks me to go into those in some detail. So like with a live event that's going to be like a workshop. So I've written then, and it goes into it, where the workshop's going to be, who it's going to be with. So you just have to write some details. This is where you need partners, by the way. So having partners, places you're going to have your workshops, etc. So you can put some stuff in about them. And you've got your project plan. So you don't have to have loads of things on this. Just think about, you know, you start your project, you can have a planning meeting to begin with. You're going to launch it publicly on social media. Then um, I'm going to do my work. So I'm going to focus on actually making my artwork. Then I'm going to do my exhibition, uh, my, sorry, my workshops. So I've got my workshops in there. Then I'm going to be installing the Excel ex exhibition. Then I'm going to be doing some events, you know, online and stuff. And that's it, that's the project. It's not nothing massive. It's quite straightforward. So here we've got the budget. So you never want to put, you always got to put 10% from other sources. So you wanna make sure that you sort of match fund it by 10%. So you don't want to have to put in here, um, you know, any, um, so you don't wanna put 100% basically coming from the Arts Council. They wanna see got it from somewhere else. So I've got another little fund which I put towards this, but you can also have support in kind. So say someone's like lending you a room or giving you some free mentoring or something like that. You just make up a figure with it and put that down as support in kind. So that counts. Um, the other thing you can do is have like ticket sales. If you're going to be make, maybe selling some tickets or something, um, then you can put that down. So this is going to then total up your total of your project. So for me, it was 17,000. And now you go over to your budget. So you've got 17,000 to spend. So how are you going to spend that? So here we've got lead artist pay. So that's me. So this is based on me being paid um, what the Arts Union says I should be paid, which is £349 a day. So I've put down there. So I've, I'm being paid 13900 in this project. That's all going to be. Um, and in that, obviously, that will break it down into, it works out, I think, about a day a week or something like that. Um, so, uh, and then you've got your Facebook ads. Don't spend loads on advertising. Just do some Facebook ads. They have a good reach and they get you good, good targets. And like if you've got an Eventbrite, um, uh, you know, Eventbrite for like a workshop or an exhibition, uh, if you do Facebook ads, that works really well. Do not waste money on like newspapers and radio and all that nonsense. It's all outdated. So just Facebook. Um, then you've got another artist that I'm paying, another couple of artists that I'm paying. Obviously, you want to pay them again in line with the artist union. And then um, I've got my materials, which I've just put as a job lot, but sometimes they actually prefer it if you actually list what you're actually spending it on. You've got to be quite precise sometimes. Um, but I think because they trust me because I've had lots of applications go through already, I don't seem to need to do it in so much detail. Um, then you've got your room hire. Um, and then just uh, just the cost of doing making all the media production online content which is, again goes to me so here i have to break down exactly how i've come up with those figures so you want to say like with materials that you know you've you know you've looked around you've priced it competitively stuff like that um here we've got the partners so this is important this section they want you to write quite a bit so you'll notice it's actually a small box when you fill it in. It's just, just a small box here. But you, if you see, I've actually put loads of writing in it. And you need to do that. It's a bit deceptive because you've got a small box. You think you've only got to write a couple of words. But actually, they want you to write quite a lot. 
So that is one thing they will reject you on, which is a bit of a trick. So that role in the project, so say you've got, um, so this person's given me mentoring. So I've written like basically, um, let me go to the beginning. Um, so he's going to be giving me mentoring. Um, and he, you know, he's, he's based from a large um, arts council funded art project where they give out mentoring and lots of support for artists. Um, and I say I've been working with him for several years and, um, and what he'll be doing. Um, so yeah, and they'll be obviously giving us some of the money towards this project as well, so put all that in. Um, so you also might sometimes write, say you've got an artist that's working with you, what criteria they meet. So you might say, for instance, this artist meets our criteria for working with us because we can see they've got really good quality artwork in the past, or they've done exhibitions, and you know they've got a good portfolio, they live locally, yeah, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So. So then you've got um, a lot of boxes, which they don't, basically the first part of the form is where they reject you. The second part of the form, I never get rejected after this point. So I don't think it matters that much what you write. It's just a lot of fluff. So if you look what I've written, so this is like risks and challenges. So what they're talking about, like how COVID remains a risk. So you just write a load of waffling about how, you know, if you were ill, you know, you maybe get another artist to cover you or you move your date. It's just so like some kind of risk plan in place that should things go wrong, you know, I would obviously let the lottery maybe at the Arts Council know if I change my plans, like stuff like that. Um, and then this part here, this is about, this one's a bit fiddly, this one, because it's got a lot of, you see these bullet points, that's their outcome, so you've got to hit these targets. So what I've done is see like with creative people, I've taken the bullet points out of this that are related to this section on creative people. And I've actually like put it in, see how I put it in capitals? So like, see how the first one, how are you, how is your project supporting people at all stages and lives in the design, development and increase of participation, high quality creative activities? So I put it, supporting people. Artists are supported by paying them to do their work um, on the project and promoting their work to a larger audience. This helps the creative person um, have a sustainable career we support them by collaborating together with other partners, creating an environment where they can thrive, right? Um, and then you write about the, how the participants, how you're going to support the participants, that's the people on your workshop. So if you think about it, like you've got three sets of people when you're engaging, you've got the artists that you're working with, you've got the participants, which are like the people on your workshop that you're doing training with, and then you've got your audience, which is another group. Um, so I often break things down into what am I doing with the artist, what am I doing with the participants, and in some cases what am I doing with the audience. Um, so he, so you can see, yeah, you just basically just break it down. So you just, it's only a couple of lines, but you just got to make sure that you match all these little bullet points. So the next one, cultural communities. So here, here that'd be this one. If you are working with communities to better understand and respond to their needs and interests, resulting in increased cultural engagement and a wider range of social benefits it brings. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? I've just written here, community needs. Red Roof is going through a transformation. It's a deprived, you know, post-industrial town. Um, and basically having the street art um, in the community is going to obviously uplift it. You know, it's going to make the area feel better. It's going to bring improve the economy. Um, I've put there about a lot of offensive graffiti that's around that we'll be covering up. You know, just stuff like that. Basically, you'll make it up, but just make sure you hit those targets. So we're going to go now to another fluffy one. Uh, so we've got communities, workforce, and creative case. So here, I've just again broken it down because again, you've got bullet points, you see, above each box. So where you've got a bullet point, make sure you address it. So same goes. Um, and same with this one, workforce, engaging. Um, and then you've got a bit about diversity. Make sure your project um, thinks about diversity. Um, now, if you want to see what I've written in these boxes fully, it is attached as a um, documents um, underneath this on the on the course online. So you can actually see then what I've exactly written in all these boxes. Again, this is more fluffy boxes, but these aren't anything really to worry about. It's, it, it's not as bad as it looks once you actually get to doing it. 
So that's basically it. Now, the next important bit I've got mentioned is about the attachment. So it asks you to give a sense of your work. Now, if you're a new artist, you're not really going to have any work to show off, are you? So you might want to put together some kind of like a Word document that's like a CV, kind of like your creative CV, your artist CV, where you put on some stuff you've done, you know, even if it's just your hobby work or something you've done at college or whatever, and you put it together so it makes it sound good, make yourself sound professional. I've attached my website, so but not everyone's going to have a website at this stage. Um, sometimes they don't accept links if it's like Instagram and stuff, so I would kind of steer away from that. I'd either put a website or I would just attach a Word document, which is like a, like a creative CV. Then it's just your monitoring documents, um, and then your um, and you sign it off, and that's it, basically. Now, one little trick I just want to show you. Say, I mean, this one went through first time, but say it had been rejected. Okay, what I would do, you see the section here about export to PDF. Okay, so if you say this had got rejected, I'd have gone back into this application. I'd have exported it as a PDF, and then I'd open my new application, and I would copy and paste from the PDF over all the writing. Um, that way, when you have to resubmit it, you don't have to start from the very beginning. You, um, you don't have to start from the beginning because you can just copy and paste everything and then just amend what they give you feedback on. So I'm going to give you an example of if you get a rejection, because I'm pretty sure in here somewhere I've had rejections. Yeah, here we go. Here's one. I actually got this one through after a few attempts. So uh, here you see they've written quality. We consider a range of factors, engagement. So note, this application could have been strengthened with evidence of other artists involved or the, yeah, about how like that selection criteria. See how I mentioned that earlier. If you write, I've selected this artist because of this criteria. That's what they were talking about. Um, and how the workshops could have contributed to high quality artistic outcomes. The application could be strengthened further with a clearer plan of how the public would engage in the finished artwork. So then you see I would have just gone to the application, copied and pasted it all over, and then just made those amendments, just added a few lines in. So let's have a look at how many times I was rejected on that one. So that's empowering women in street art, because I did get it eventually. So let's have a look. I've had one rejection there. So I got it on the second go by the looks of it. And there's my offer letter. Let's have a look at offer letter so you know what it looks like. It's a joyous thing when that comes through. Here we go. I'm writing to you to offer you. And they give you um, they give you almost all of it up front, about 90%. They keep 10% back to give you at the very end of your project. So when you get this offer letter, you, they release the money in about three to four weeks. It's delayed a bit at the moment, so it's probably more like four weeks. So there you have it. So there was an example of an application form that went through first time and then one that I had rejected, which I resubmitted and then got. So I hope that helps and hope it helps you realise that although it is, yes, a very big form, you know, it's not that bad once you get into it um, and you can break it down to do a little bit each time. Um, don't think you know you need to write at some high level or be highly educated. It's not like that at all. You can just bullet point things and just write a little bit of fluff. I do recommend you do it yourself and don't get a bid writer. I know it's tempting to think, oh, I'll just pay someone else three hundred pounds to do it. In my experience, that do they, it doesn't work. They don't go through because no one knows your projects like you. And often the bid writers will write stuff and it's just wrong. Um, and so it's really important that you do the project yourself and that you've done the project planning and you've done the application yourself. In my opinion, that is how you uh, become sustainable. That is how your project will be successful. Um, and that is my advice. And that's how I've always done it. So I hope that was useful. If you've got any questions, let me know.